Welcome back to the Underage Packers podcast. Joining me today to recap an absolutely insane game in Cincinnati, 25-22, Packers get the win, is uh, Dara Terror. Um, try my best at pronouncing the name, uh, but uh, thanks for joining me. Always uh, a pleasure, Joey. Love being on. Yes, uh, should be a fun one to uh, talk about. It was a fun exciting game so especially with that last quarter I mean there are so many times from the start of the fourth quarter to the end obviously where I thought this game was going to be over I mean real and there's it kind of reminds me of some scenarios in the NFC championship game against Buccaneers where like those interceptions that Jair had in the fourth quarter like the Packers are down six Nine minutes left. They have so many opportunities to win this game, and they just can't do it. Um, and in this game, there's so many opportunities where either the Bengals should win or the Packers should win. At, at the start off the over to start off overtime, Devondre Campbell gets an interception on the very first play. Great field position for the Packers, and then they still. I would. I really think they should have played for the touchdown there instead of the field goal, uh, especially with that great opportunity presented to them. But uh, Dare, any thoughts you want to add to start us off here? Yeah, well, I think you hit it right in the head with the the NFC Championship game similarities. Um, Mm -hmm. That that really stuck out to me. I mean, you got the big play, the game-changing play uh, before the end of the first half, just like like that God-forsaken NFC Championship game. You've got the defense that. that is... (laughs) <laughs> a defense that is quietly keeping you in the game there. Yeah. Packers defense only allowed eight points in the entire second half and overtime yesterday, which was an insane mark. Wow. Um, and it just felt like although the Packers offense could, they could at least get to the red zone. It obviously, it fell on the special teams and fell on Crosby that they couldn't get it done in regulation despite having, like so many attempts to just yes. finish that game. Yeah, and that red zone offense green up. I you know, last year it's a the gold zone. It's Nathaniel Hackett and every, all of the offensive stars called it. Um and their red zone efficiency was just so good through these first five weeks. So they really I wouldn't say struggled. I'm, that might be an overstatement, but they certainly haven't been as efficient in the in the gold zone if you will, as last year. So I don't know if that's some a slow start type of thing, um, whatever it is. Um, they've also, I've also noticed Robert Tunyon not getting as many opportunities, um, but I mean, they're still putting points on the board. They're four and one. Vontae mm-hmm. Adams is still the number one wide receiver in the league. So uh, I'm not too concerned about that right now, but that red zone offense, especially in this game, really was not able to uh, meet that. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't really get Adams in for some more uh, more of those design touchdown plays you saw it in week two against the Lions. Uh, yep. The the motion, uh, wait, was it? it was probably week three. I can't remember. Um, it's, it's all a blur at this stage. Yep. Uh, but you saw it so many times last year. Adams in motion. Uh, one particular one that strikes out to me is against the Rams last year. Him and Jalen Ramsey in motion. You just can't beat that. Uh, yeah. the, the Packers just didn't look towards any of that. I don't know if it was a case that they weren't getting inside like the five yard line enough and mm-hmm. really deep down. I mean, they were kind of getting stopped in between the 10 and the 20. Um, so what, whatever it was, it, it was a little disappointing that they couldn't finish the job when they got down that far. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have the, the stats on that, but there, there was certainly plenty of drives. Uh, I mean, the one that sticks out the most in this game was in the fourth quarter when it was tied at 22. Angles just went down and scored with three minutes left. And then Aaron Jones breaks off an excellent run. Uh, there's that, And they can't get anything there. And then also earlier in that game where uh, it's the Packers 19-14 and Aaron Rodgers shows an absolutely beautiful pass uh, for, what, 40, 50 yards to Devontae Adams right down the middle. And then they still... Uh, they settle for a field goal there. Uh, Crosby misses actually on that one after the Jones explosive run, but yeah, off red zone offense, not, not the same one we expect. Um, so hopefully they can get that going. Uh, 
another point I want to bring up is obviously the Packers are dealing with a lot of injuries right now, uh, more more so than you would like. A lot of starters, a lot of a few depth pieces too, like Chauncey Rivers. But this game you had uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling, Jair Alexander, David Bakhtiari, uh, Zadarius Smith, uh, a lot of other. Uh, great starter player Josh Myers who has quickly become a, a centerpiece of this offensive line no pun intended um, uh, all, a lot of starters out this game and Packers were able to really resort to their their core players uh, that were still in this game Aaron Rodgers Monte Adams Aaron Jones uh, getting a trifecta Rodgers 300 passing yards Adams 200 receiving Jones 100 uh, Darrell how surprised have you been impressed with um, this team being able to recover from injuries, yeah, I mean you got to be impressed with uh, uh, how they're they've been able to fight back against that adversity all season yeah. long, um, especially of, along the offensive line. To miss to miss one starter at the start of the year, we were worried about missing Bakhtiari. To miss two of our best offensive linemen, they had to go to miss our three best offensive linemen. Yeah. For, for this game I mean you're not up against an elite defensive line they look better than they probably should have um, but nonetheless you should always be happy when you're when you're going out and winning the game without your three best offensive linemen two of your three best defensive players in Darius Smith and Jair Alexander your deep threat in Marquez Valdez-Scantling like the Packers there's not many teams in the NFL that are as banged up as the Packers are right now and they're still They've still just won four in a row. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you gotta hand it to them. Yeah, I'm really excited. Obviously, it's not like once all these guys come back, the injuries are going to disappear. But I'm so excited to see uh, what that offensive line looks like because they're they're playing pretty decent right now uh, with plenty of second, third streamers. You know, Yash Nyman, um, Royce Newman doing a great job all season long. Um, Lucas Patrick being able to slide in at center. Uh, who is that? Uh, John Runyon at left guard. So they've really, they have so many versatile moving pieces um, that even when a guy like Elton Jenkins unexpectedly goes out, they're able, able to move along pretty quickly without too much trouble. One thing that I was pretty surprised to see on the defensive side of the ball, um, and they've kind of been doing this all season long. Um, yeah. And, you know, week one, Zedaria Smith being limited in his playing time played a part on that, but the use of kind of depth backup linebackers taking out Preston Smith and Rashawn mm-hmm. Gary uh, sometimes. Uh, you had Jonathan Garvin getting 20 snaps, 30% of the defensive snaps. Uh, and then where's Ladarius Hamilton? Ladarius getting 19 snaps, so 28% of the snaps. Uh, Dara, you I, calling? I honestly had I had to do a double take when I saw oh. when, I, when I saw the camera cut to a guy called Hamilton, and I was like, "Wait, who again is that?" Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Like, I swear by I know every player of the second Hamilton." I mean, yeah. I was like, "Oh yeah, him." <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized, like, damn, this team is really, really banged up. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think he managed to get a couple of pressures in this game, which, I mean, fair play to him. I think that was his first game ever to mm-hmm. undrafted free agent last year, bounced around a few practice squads, so good for him. Yeah, I, I was exactly like you. I was like, wait, would you release Kamal Martin? So <laughs> <laughs> I was very, very confused to see 54 out there. Um, but he, even before that, they were using a lot of Chauncey Rivers, Jonathan Garvin as well. So do you think this is kind of, uh, I mean, what do you think the reason is for that? Because that's certainly something we didn't see too much of in Mike Pettin's defense. But do you think that is because they want to give Preston Rashawn some uh, rest time? Or do you think that's kind of something in Joe Barry's defense? Yeah, well, I, I personally like it. I like uh rotating your your pass rush uh Rashan Gary hasn't yeah is yet to play a full like a full game of snaps it I mean he yeah. for the first two years of his career he was a rotational rusher behind the two Smiths. It's obviously working out for Preston playing less snaps. He's 
he's been playing a lot better this year. And you know, I like what they have in Garvin. He's he's twenty two years old still. He's this is what he was brought in as as a athletic guy with some upside. He could really contribute this year. And yeah. he's glad he's getting the chance to shine now with with the Zedarius out. So when when Zedarius is back in the fold, if and I hope he is back in the fold, um, that's a really good unit from top to bottom. And I'm impressed with them so far. Yeah, and. The, Jonathan Garvin, you bring up, that was kind of uh, what I think made the 2020 team so good is the players that were able to step up unexpectedly. Um, this is a different situation for, for Jonathan Garvin, really, because mainly because of injury uh, to Zedaria Smith. But there's a lot of guys, Robert Tunyon being one of them, Marquez Valdez Cantling, uh, another that you could say kind of had breakout years. Um, but the Packers were really had a lot of depth at a lot of positions. Um, and it really goes all back to players that are stepping up now because of injury. A lot of guys that aren't going to be on the stat sheet, aren't going to have any uh, sports center highlights, um, but are, are going to contribute in, in quite a way. Talking about linebackers, let's move it to the inside linebacker spot. Devondre Campbell, man, already has 48 total tackles on the year. And they, these aren't no uh, Blake Martinez 48 total. No, no, very these, different. These are some real tackles where he's getting them behind the line of scrimmage and that over in overtime, shoot, he had the interception to start off. I mean, I, I mean that would have been more disappointing if he didn't intercept that because that was a horrific throw from Joe Burrow. Um, so he gets that interception there. Uh, it would have been cool if he could return it, but that's besides the point. Uh, and then on the very next drive, uh, he's able to get a tackle in the backfield. Um, dude is a player. And like Aaron Rodgers said, how he was just sitting there on the street, were able to pick him up in the middle of the offseason. Great pickup by the Packers. Played uh, 59 snaps yesterday, 88%. So Chris Barnes is still uh, – he has that, he had that concussion. Uh, so still being used a little limited caution. Um so Devondre Campbell, now the veteran leader in this uh, Packers defense. What have you think? What have you thought of him being a great veteran leader on this team? Yeah, I've been extremely impressed. He has come in and played better than he had any right to play as a free agent picked up in June. Yeah. Um, it's probably the best Packers linebacker core has looked in over half yeah. decade, um, yeah. if not more. Uh, they continually missed on these free agents, PJ Goods and Antonio Morris, and uh, there's more, yeah. uh, Kirksey <laughs> last year. Um, so it's nice to finally get one. Maybe they can go two for two with Jalen Smith. Who knows? Sure, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't think Jalen Smith's going to play as big of a role as some people might expect. Chris Bonds is still linebacker two on this team. He made a terrific play yesterday on that sack sure. in the first half. Um so, yeah, I've been really impressed with Campbell, with with uh, Barnes. I mean, considering where these guys came from, I mean, this is an undrafted free agent and someone who no NFL team wanted until June. Right. Uh, I mean, you got to be happy with, with the returns here, especially you're not paying a premium at the position. A lot of other positions taking up a lot of money on the Packers. Linebacker isn't one of them, and it's been one of the best positions so far this year. Yeah, you go back to right before the 2020 opener. Uh, when, uh, we had Christian Kirksey, who we, we were very excited about. But then after that, we were looking at a room of a fifth rounder and Kamal Martin, uh, Oren Burks, and Ty Summers. So now, fast forward to a year, they have Devondre Campbell, Chris Barnes, who is like the story of uh, just elevated to the roster a day before the game after being released onto the practice squad and now a full-time starter, pretty incredible story for Chris Barnes. And I think he's only getting started moving on to the offensive side of the ball here. Um, let, we'll, I, we'll talk about there's a lot to be excited about on the offense. Um, but let's talk about Equinemia St. Brown, man. I'm a big fan. Well, I was rooting for EQ. I was hoping <laughs> we turn it around. Uh, I was rooting for him to make the roster this year and dude just cannot, cannot figure it out. He didn't get many opportunities in the receiving game, but in that first quarter, he had 12 snaps in this game. 
in that first quarter, there was a specifically a screen where a screenplay to Al Lazar, where Cobb has one guy, EQ is supposed to block this other guy, and he just completely misses. He doesn't even whiff. He doesn't even like make a bad attempt at block. Like he doesn't even make an attempt to block him. And Cobb doesn't even get it all fiery or anything. He just looks at him like, what, what are you doing? Doc? <laughs> so EQ, you can clearly see why he's not on that 53 man roster. I don't know why. Um, you know, I'm not saying Malik Taylor is a great blocker, but I'm not sure why he does. Uh, Malik doesn't get those snaps over EQ. Um, so EQ though, not making the best of us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to give up on, on EQ. Uh, it's been three years. Uh, well, obviously with the injury. Um, so he's been disappointing. He's had his chances. I mean, MVS goes down. I know it's a, it's a busy receiver room already, but sure. he's had MVS go down. He's, uh, Sternberger's out of the equation. That's another pass catcher of death on the team. So uh, uh, I don't I don't see how this isn't his last year in Green Bay. Um, yeah, I'm I'm surprised he's still hanging around <laughs> at the minute. Right. I, I like Malik Taylor. Malik Taylor is game in and game out one of the Packers' best players on special teams. He made a crucial tackle on a kick return yesterday. Uh, I it was early in the game. I happened mm-hmm. to trying to happen to squeeze through a hole. Malik came up with a good tackle. Um, I don't see any way EQ can really contribute going forward. Uh, the pa- the Packers receiving core as a whole is it's pretty interesting right now. You've got yes, Devonte Adams has Devonte Adams has a target share of thirty seven percent, which I think. There, I I was looking for about an hour trying to find where I could where I could see like all time target shares. Mm-hmm. I unless Michael Thomas in twenty nineteen with the Saints, I don't think you can. There there has been another receiver get a target share anywhere close to oh, what comfortably over a third of the teams <laughs> of the teams all targets. Oh God, I mean, it's insane. Devonte is currently on pace to. Uh, break the all-time receiving yards record by four yards, Megatrons. Huh. Um, wow. He needs to keep up his pace. It's it's doable. It's unlikely, but, I mean, yeah. if anyone's going to do it, it's him. Right, so yeah. back to do it. Yeah. Yep, that would be uh, quite the fashion to go out for the last dance. I mean, but, oh, yeah. That no, would... don't, don't bring that up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to bring the mood down there. I'm sorry. Let's see here. Any other uh, thoughts you want to add? Any other observations from this game? Well, uh, the the Randall Cobb trade just continues to, to pay off. Sure. I mean, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is going to be in line for a GM job somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at this, uh, I mean, at this point, bring back Clay Matthews and probably get like sure. two sacks yeah. a game to finish up the <laughs> season. Um, I, I don't. I don't see why we didn't see this coming from Randall Cobb. He never really fell off in any mm-hmm. way. He was just in a much worse situation than in Green Bay. Um, I'd say he's a better receiver than Alan Lazard right now. Um, yeah. I, I don't think his I don't think his uh, his snap share could should go down once MVS returns. I think if anything, it should be Lazard getting pushed down. Um, and that, that's not a knock on Alan Lazard. It's just that Randall Cobb has been channeling his inner 2014 self so far this season yeah um for for whatever reason uh one more note is uh on special teams um mason crosby we we've somehow not really talked about him until <laughs> now <laughs> i i was shocked just watching it um mm-hmm. i was almost laughing at some stages just thinking like yeah. this is this is the craziest thing i've ever seen Evan McPherson got inches away to finish the game in regulation, hit the damn flag on top of the post in overtime. I've never seen that. I've never seen that happen before. Um, While Mason just continued to shank kicks. And uh, it was weird. Are you confident that he bounced back? Yeah. I mean, I I see a lot of people uh, on Instagram, especially not 
losing all the hope in him. I I tend to think it, and I hope it it's a situation like a few years against Detroit. But the only difference between uh, in t- that situation in 2018 to now is that Mason is three years older. And there's obviously that concern that he's lost it. Obviously, that when it he wouldn't just wake up yesterday and his leg would be completely shot for the rest of his career. But there is obviously that concern now that he's what 36, 37 years old as a kicker. Um, but but I do think he'll he'll be fine. You do have to feel glad that they finished that game on a field goal and, and actually not on a touchdown because if they had to just walk that game off the touchdown, although it would have felt good, you would have been going in the next week saying, I cannot trust my kicker. Yep. Uh, whereas now you feel like that final kick erases all doubt and we're just back to regular Mason Crosby and life exactly. is good for the foreseeable future. Right. It's just like in 2018 where after that Lions game where he missed four or five kicks, Next week against San Fran, Monday Night Football. Somehow that that uh, that game always seems to come up in uh, mine and Big B's episodes because he attended that game. But uh, <laughs> that next week he's able to kick the game winner against San Fran, and this week he's able to get that redeeming game winner uh, in that that very same game. So Mason Crosby, he's back officially. Money Mason. Money Mason and. Uh, it was a fun game. Next week, we have the Chicago Bears on hand at Soldier Field uh, against Justin Fields. Uh, should be another fun one. Hopefully, the Packers offense are able to get things going again. Uh, that's all we got for you today. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, Dara, thanks for joining me. Thanks, as always, Joey. Yep. Uh, where can people uh, find you on social medias? Uh, you can find me on Twitter if you can manage to spell my name. Um, I'm the guy with the white profile picture. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can find me at Dara Carher, D-I-R-E. I mean, just go for it. I don't care. Um, <laughs> you can find some. But yeah, <laughs> it'll do whatever. <laughs> you come across me. <laughs> yeah, he has uh, some great articles uh, on plenty of different websites. Uh, and he's always he's always my guy since, since I don't want to play pay for a PF, pro, uh, pro football focus subscription. He's always, <laughs> he's always got the grades out on Twitter. Looking looking out for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, follow us here at Underage Packers on all the social medias. We'll see you later. Go pack, go.